Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. As you might notice if you look really hard, the only religion I criticize is Islam. I don't talk about other religions as part of my work, for example uh, Christianity, or Judaism, or Hinduism, Buddhism, and all the others. As a result, some even get the impression that I belong to one of those faiths, but that is not true. I am what people call an atheist. I don't believe in any god, I don't follow any religion. But as an atheist, I should criticize all religions, right? No, and I won't. Nowadays, the word atheist is so much misused, which is one reason why I don't want to call myself an atheist. Many think that an atheist should criticize all religion, and hate all religions, all of them equally. But criticizing all religions, hating all religions, is actually anti-theism, not atheism. Atheism is only the lack of belief in the existence of God or gods. Many atheists themselves become anti-theists and use the two terms interchangeably and expect people like me to act like them. And they say things like, you are not a real atheist if you don't bash Christianity. Mainly comes from ex-Christians or atheists in Christian circles that uh, focus to 95% on Christianity but say I hate all religions equally. And by expecting others to follow suit, they become what they pretend to despise. A dogmatic group. A religion. No offense, but that's just... I choose to distance myself from all of that and call myself a free thinker. I form my own opinions on things based on reasoning and logic. I question everything. I have my own thoughts and views about the world and us and religions. But most importantly, I won't form a movement of free thinkers. I think for myself. Personally, I don't have any problem with religion. I don't have a problem with people believing in God or anything supernatural, even if I don't believe in it. I can respect that. If a Muslim believes in Allah, he can do that. What do I care? I used to believe too at some point. We are still not at a point where we are 100% sure about the origins of us and our universe, the future of it, the shape of it, or what lies beyond it. At this point, it would be arrogant of me or anyone else to criticize and insult people for their beliefs and convictions. I criticize Islam not because of the belief in Allah, but because of the qualities of Islam. Islam is very different, so much that I feel bad calling it a religion, and I certainly don't want to call it an Abrahamic religion. Abrahamic religions, in my view, are Judaism and Christianity. Islam has less in common with those religions than it has differences. Let's put some of the most obvious differences aside, such as the origin of the Quran and the Bible, or the birthplaces, or the nation, or the commandments. These are not our topic. The main reason why I oppose Islam so strictly is its order to fight the people and spread the religion by the sword. But Christianity and the Crusades... Shut up. The Crusades were a series of actions taken by later Christians, by the Catholics under their authority. It has virtually nothing to do with, with Christian fundaments, neither do the Dark Ages, for example, as we call them historically. The Crusades were not even what a usual Californian student girl tells you it was, although they were not very innocent. But let's put all of that aside. Even if we were historically stupid and ignorant for a second, and assumed that the Crusades were a big, massive evil, a crime against humankind, a series of pretty dark and brutal... whatever. Even if that was the case, discrediting Christianity for that would be like discrediting Islam for ISIS. No, wait. That's actually wrong, because you wouldn't be able to trace the Crusades back to the fundaments of Christianity. But you could find most of the disgusting stuff that ISIS does in the fundamental scripture of Islam. Christianity, Hinduism, Judaism, Buddhism, Jainism and all the other religions don't order to spread the religion by the sword and subjugate everyone forcibly under religious supremacy. Islam does. Christianity and Judaism say love thy neighbor as thyself. Islam tells you not to initially greet your neighbor if he's not a Muslim. Hinduism and the other religions don't even have sets of rules as to what to do with the spread of your religion. They tell you to preserve your community and to resort to violence only in self-defense. Some even abhor that kind of violence, while Islam tells you that you will certainly go to hell if you flee from the battlefield. <laughs> Christianity says, who lives by the sword will die by the sword while Islam gives the highest rank in heaven, because you have ranks in heaven, to the one who fights and dies for Allah. 
Islam punishes apostates with death, and that is a very clear, uncontroversial ruling in Islam. It has been so for 1,400 years. Only today, under Western influence, have some Muslims started to abandon and oppose this. Christianity has no such penalty, although the Romans instated a penalty for apostasy at some point, something unchristian. Judaism had initially a death penalty for people who abandon Judaism and try to turn other Jews away as well. This rule was abandoned 2000 years ago, when Rabbinic Judaism started to become the norm of Judaism, as it still is, 600 years before Islam introduced this ruling. Tell that to those Muslim apologists who say, uh, Judaism has that rule too. Some Muslim apologists try to tell us that Hinduism has such a ruling. But it's very obvious why they want to say that. And it's very obvious that they have no idea how Hinduism works. I don't even want to go into that, it's ridiculous. In Islam, you can be punished with death for blasphemy, apostasy, homosexuality, adultery, mischief and corruption, which is very vague, insulting Muhammad and other things. In Judaism, there were a series of similar punishable things in the Bible, but the Mishnah, which is the first religious collection of Rabbinic Judaism, calls a court that issues a death sentence a murderer. And death penalties were abandoned 2000 years ago, 600 years before Islam even came into existence, again. Christianity has no death penalty at all, there is no mention, and early churches condemned the death penalty, until the Romans messed it up at some point and instated unchristian death penalties. Christians reformed Christianity by taking it out of the hands of such powers and returning it to its fundaments, where love and forgiveness were much more important than punishing people. If we reformed Islam, the outcome would be the opposite. No other religion is a state system of religious supremacy except Islam. No other religion has a set system on how to rule every aspect of the state, the military and crime except Islam. No other religion gives you an ancient human as an example and tells you to imitate every aspect of his life, except Islam, which gives you a man who became a warlord, had a dozen wives, one of them six years old, had slaves including sex slaves, and insulted virtually every other group in this world. Moreover, let's forget about the past and fundamentals for a minute. No other religion causes so many problems in the world as Islam does today. No other religion keeps their cultures back so much. A dozen countries still punish apostasy with death, all Islamic. They punish blasphemy, thoughts with death. Homosexuality is punished with death. Adultery is punishable with death or other punishments. Islam is by far the world leader in science. Oh, it's terrorism. Women are still treated like garbage in the Islamic world and in Islamic cultures outside the Islamic world. Not wearing the hijab is a legal issue or mostly a very severe social issue. No other religion is so much concerned and involved in people's private lives and bedrooms as Islam is. And finally, and this is very important to the topic of this video, no other religion mentions other religions and religious groups by their names and insults them, threatens them, makes ever-living hostile prophecies about them. In no other religion will you grow up hating specific religious groups, like Jews, and will be shown directly a piece of fundamental religious scripture that supports the idea of hating them. No other religion is this hostile against everyone else. No other religion calls others by their names, the worst of creation. Please, fact check everything I said, everything I told you. But stop making excuses. Stop telling me that all religions were equally bad. That I should criticize all of them if I criticize one of them. I am an ex-Muslim, a former Muslim who strictly practiced and diligently studied his religion for years. I talk about Islam, I know Islam very well. I am a child of Western values, of human values. I see Islam as a threat, as a big disturbance, and I will intellectually oppose it wherever I can. I'm a respectful freethinker. I don't believe in God or gods, and I have very, very good reasons for that, beyond morality. But I sympathize with religions. I like Christianity, and I have a very deep emotional connection to it. I find Judaism culturally very interesting, a treasure. I find Hinduism fascinating and Buddhism mesmerizing. I love the point Jainism wants to make and see bravery and goodness in Sikhism. 
I like the inner peace in Taoism and Confucianism. I feel sorry for the loss of Zoroastrianism. But I don't like totalitarianism, supremacism, masquerading as a religion. I don't like Islam. And I invite everyone, even the believers of Islam, Muslims, to come together and understand why. I was once a Muslim, and the world looked pretty dark when I was a Muslim. Believe me, the world is so much better, so much more peaceful, so much more positive once you are not a Muslim anymore. I don't hate anyone. I don't hate Muslims. I hate ideas, but I don't hate people. I hate what Islam does to people. I hate what Islam does to Muslims. And that's why I speak out against Islam. Thank you, and stay away from Islam.